नमस्कार नाम अशोक व्याज एंड आई प्लेयर यू वेलकम इंग समन हु इन अ वे रिप्रेजेंट्स द जर्नी ऑफ समन हु इज ऑन द वर्ज ऑफ रियलाइजिंग इज अमेरिकन ड्रीम बट देन ही इज पुल बैक बाय लव ऑफ भारत माता देन ही कम्स बैक एंड सर्व इन अमेरिका एंड समन हु इज नोन टू इंडियन अमेरिकन कम्युनिटी मेंबर्स इन न्यूयॉर्क शिकागो एरिया न्यू जर्सी एरिया स्पेशली एज रीजनल मैनेजर ऑफ एयर इंडिया ऋषिकांत सिंह जी नाउ इन पोस्ट सर्विस फेज ज्वाइनिंग अस एज एन ऑथर ऑफ द बुक व्हाट इज दैट बुक द लार्ड्स नेस्ट नमस्ते वेलकम ऋषि जी नमस्कार सो वंस आई वेलकम यू अगेन हाउ इट मेक्स यू फील कमिंग बैक टू अमेरिका um not as someone who is serving air india it's a interesting journey because i have been associated with america as a student i studied from new york and uh, then i journeyed back to india lived most of my life in india worked for air india and once i finished with air india then uh, it has become a, pr- a personal journey but i have a lot of friends uh, and uh, more than friends i think it is uh, my connect to the indian diaspora and there is something about the indians overseas i find them very nice people and i would like to stay connected with them so i take every opportunity to visit and to meet up with them so i think uh, this uh, feeling is mutual uh, uh i say on my behalf as well as on behalf of most of our friends that uh, they also share this feeling for you and what is it that helps us build the kind of soulful bond is rooted in india probably that was the reason most of us uh, don't think that uh, once you have done your mba here in america you would like to go back was it a conscious decision or it was uh, the compulsion of the situation it was a conscious uh, decision in a way it was little uh, a bit of a personal angle was there uh, family angle was there but that was supposed to be only for a very short period of time i could have uh, very much chosen not to return to india but i thought uh, i've learned something here there's a lot one gets to see and hear and learn and with a formal education i thought i could do my two bits for my country if not directly at least through the public sector which as i always say is owned by the people of india so that was an opportunity that uh, presented itself coincidentally so i left my wall street uh, work and i went back to india and i joined air india which i was a great journey by itself so now um, with couple of i mean few decades with uh, air india uh, allow me to uh, ask you before we come to your book based on a common sense uh, the kind of study that you will have in mba here in america and when you go back and you serve in a public sector undertaking uh, which is uh, supposed to have more restrictions and less uh, opportunities for you to have uh, innovative thinking so was there a feeling of frustration somewhere along the way is one side another side do you see what you learn here in mba is relevant uh, from the point of view of an organization like air india it's a very interesting question because uh, this question was posed to be by a chairman uh, the late mr rusi modi i had an opportunity he asked me the same thing he said you us mba i don't recognize because it is not relevant <laughs> to india yes so i told him well uh, it may be so but if you see the journey that it takes for an indian student with somewhat limited means to acquire an mba mostly funded by oneself by sheer hard work and managing on and off campus work i think that journey is equal to an mba it's a great learning there are lot of lessons a city like new york in particular where you live uh, you know among a, cos- a wide variety of uh, people uh, coming from all over the globe i believe after london it must be the biggest melting pot so that learning is a learning of life i mean education in the classroom is only one part of it the second is living in a city like new york working in a city like new york and interacting with people of various faiths various countries various languages various beliefs and thoughts uh, i think that education uh, is only complements what you study in a classroom and that is very useful in life 
and I could, I was fortunate I could use a lot of it in my work. So we'll not get into that uh, detail for now. I will uh, move towards your book. Uh, but uh, I must also compliment you and congratulate you while you are serving here as regional manager of Air India here in New York. Um, you off and on were mentioning that you wanted to write and you love writing and you had written a few articles. And so um, you finally ended up uh, writing this book. So talk to me about the first um, letter, uh, the first sentence that you typed was the concept of the book uh, already um, uh, clear to you or as you started writing, uh, the story unfolded and it is a fiction yet uh, it is based on some um, real life uh, in incidences and of your own experience. Uh, it is true. I always loved, uh, you know, I wanted to write, I, I love to teach, I love to impart whatever little I know. So I had the story in my mind and it was a story of a struggle. Since I have seen some small struggles, my parents have come through big struggles. So I said one story of struggle I must write and it was about the dream of an ordinary person to own a small house in a city like Mumbai which is expensive by Indian standards, even by global standards. And employees of an organization who are on a salary, it is actually a dream. So in that dream, that story was there. There were a lot of missing pieces. Uh, but there was also this love and fascination with the city of Mumbai and how it has come about, what is its history. So I could manage, as I started writing about this story, I actually started weaving the history of Mumbai. So I start with the history of Mumbai, which got added later in a sense, and then I come on to the main story, which is okay, about... So t tell us why the title, The Lark's Nest, and what is uh, the significance uh, of um, Lark here? Uh, there is a bird called Skylark, which soars very high in the sky, and uh, in the evening or after it's finished its search for food, it comes down and settles down on the ground. This is one of the few birds, at least in the predator species, that lives on the ground. It makes its nest on the ground. So this story actually was woven about a group of Air India, uh, of employees of an airline who actually wish to make a house. And uh, you know, some of them are pilots, some are aerostasis flight persons, some were like me on ground jobs. So we always had this, ki, okay, we may be flying high, we fly to so many countries all over the world, but finally we have to come to a home and that home is on the ground. So that is how it came to my mind that the lark's nest is like aviators, but who will come finally on, on earth and, and live and their home will be on the ground and not in the air. Okay, so there are um, interesting uh, ways in which you will let your story flow. When I say interesting ways, you need uh, to have uh, some characters who are um, interesting for your readers and they are also following your intuitive uh, projection of the flow of the story. So where did you find these characters uh, that are uh, carrying forward uh, the last nest? The chief protagonist of this uh, happens to be a young man who without having sufficient means dreams of a big house and he finds a young uh, professional in the company that he's working who promises the house and who seems to be able to deliver it. So the story is woven about both these two people and how they interact, how others were involved, the various processes that went in. So it was an, uh, a professional, an IT professional, and you could say there was this young man who was more on the business side of the organization, and how they interacted over a period of time, and what all challenges came, what all happened in their lives. Some dramatic moments were there. So this story goes uh, revolves around two people, actually. So two people and a story and the dream um, of owning a home what about the romantic side, uh, which um, uh, kind of uh, seems to be a natural subplot or a plot? Is it there? Uh, it should have been. Actually, I, one should have uh, had far more romance in this because there was a lot of romance which was hidden 
from view of the people of the protagonists involved but yes there is uh, some angles of uh, romance in the life of both the people out of which the one who actually promoted the housing venture his life was uh, somewhat colorful and uh, there's a lot of stories sub stories built into the story so rishi ji is not willing uh, probably to spill all the beans of uh, his uh, book but um, it will be um, relevant to see your insight on uh, it is apparently like a thriller also there are some mafia um, clouds on the protagonist and the way it unfolds and um can you say something more on uh, this and especially you have mentioned about mumbai so owning a home and then land mafia and um uh, there, there are some uh, mysterious ways in which people uh, have a facade on their face uh, what uh, you see is not what you always get is also somewhere um, underneath uh, uh, the lark's nest book very much uh, in fact as we speak about mumbai and a perspective since i have lived uh, and studied uh, here in us so i have a slightly different perspective of my own motherland to say and a city like mumbai has nurtured me as well so using both of that uh, one had to and there is no way anybody can escape some of the undercurrents that happen for a common man who goes about his life he does not experience many of the issues that are mentioned in the book but for somebody who tries to do something big or something different you have to deal with the lay of the land you have to deal with the organizations the uh, judiciary the uh, police system the political system uh, the rules and regulations uh, so you get to actually interact with all of them especially when there is a crisis if everything goes smoothly then there is no story to tell that is absolutely true so i am reminded charlie chaplin was once asked uh, the secret of uh, his storytelling and he says i put my characters in the trouble and i bring them out so this uh, process of getting into trouble and coming out of trouble is i think this is universally true whatever kind of story it is it could be emotional trouble it could be economic trouble it could be political turmoil whatever it is so in your book there are some references of the political involvement also which is not very um, detailed but uh, one gets an idea of uh, some uh, overview of how uh, political forces are also uh, into play a city like mumbai has got tremendous land shortage so it is moving like new york it is moving upwards yet you need a tiny piece of land somewhere to even go upwards so this story uh, is about a piece of land that was owned by the government so naturally this group of uh, employees go to the government make a request try to get the land enough challenges to get it once they get it then the various agencies get involved and moment you are talking of the government obviously there are political angles there are bureaucratic angles and as far as law and judiciary is concerned at some stage whenever if there is a conflict of any kind or an or a impasse where you cannot go forward you need to draw on these agencies and they do come to help you they may have their own way you as a civilian may not be fully aware of how to deal with them but you learn as you go so some elements of all that including the political uh, angle the bureaucratic angle the judiciary the law enforcement i have various law enforcements all are hinted at the book it is not a book about them so the story doesn't dwell on them but you will get a full clear picture of what lies in a city like mumbai and what it takes for an ordinary person to achieve a dream so to have uh, such um, minute details interwoven into a plot uh, makes uh, it interesting but at the same time as a reader uh, one is always um, keen on making sure that the book is interesting enough uh, to to appeal to him or her so from that point of view and since you have not been a, a, a continuously a professional writer 
when you decide to take up the challenge of writing a novel, uh, you think about other uh, aspects of uh, writing skill in terms of the structure, uh, the division of chapters and so how was that process and is there someone who was sort of holding your hand or uh, someone who would you would like to give credit for uh, the final shape? I guess uh, over a period of life when you read so many books, uh, whether they are textbooks or they are story books and you see some great films which are based on great stories, uh, more or less you get an idea what is the recipe for success. In this case, uh, I did ask a couple of uh, authors who have published books and they did share their winning formula. It's a different matter that I did not exactly follow that formula because I thought ki this story is important. Uh, it need not be a commercial success, that was not the strategy. And it yet I wanted the story to be pretty raw, pretty direct, straight from the heart, straight from the soul and not too much masala. So this is the story that I have written. So what was uh, the first response uh, that you got from uh, people who were somewhere um, uh, in the frequency of that kind of experience of finding a home and passing through these kind of struggles? I was reached out by many who start, who bought my book, who started reading it and they said like, you know, it's a very graphic account in a sense of what they have undergone and they can relate to at least 20 to 50,000 people who are members of cooperative societies, uh, housing societies in India and particularly in the city of Mumbai and Maharashtra out of which a good number uh, unfortunately face some or the other part of it. So they immediately responded and they connected to it. So I did get a lot of uh, appreciation. Plus many did not know the history of Mumbai, which I have touched in the first couple of chapters. So to them also it was a revelation that the city in which they are born, brought up, they are doing business, they studied. Uh, many spent all their lives, but they don't know its evolution per se. So I've just touched on it. There's so much in history that one cannot write in uh, a single book. And this was not the story about the history of Mumbai, but I have touched on it so that more people get interested. And similarly, they can explore the land that they live in. It could be New York, it could be anywhere in the world. Talking about land and uh, the way uh, we are connecting to Earth uh, is causing um, <laughs> trouble for people and we hear about uh, climate uh, changing uh, and so those kind of uh, problems which earlier we, we didn't foresee but now as a human race and I'm not restricting this question to India or to any particular country but overall our lifestyle where you have a lot of uh, um, things that are being used that cannot be recycled and you have the sea spitting lot of plastic and so somewhere you have been close to that evidence and we'll have extended conversation with you about your love for nature and but do, do you see that this um, can be uh, reversed uh, when I said this meaning the kind of lifestyle we have adopted and the way we are moving collectively and again I'm not talking about politics or a particular country. I think more or less, uh, barring some countries where uh, people cannot afford, everyone is adopting this lifestyle where, of course, fridge is a necessity, mobile phone is a necessity, computers are necessary, and we are creating a lot of uh, things which um, Earth cannot uh, uh, sort of dissolve. Uh, so, so talk to me about your thoughts on uh, this issue, which. Uh, is not directly a part of the last nest, but it somewhere uh, also relates to that. It does. Um, I have always been conscious of the environment very young and I always felt a connect. Mother Earth and in India we celebrate it, you know. We have a history of uh, um, worshipping, you know, one Devi, which is the uh, goddess of forests. So it really by extension it is Bhu Devi, which is, you know, Mother Earth. And sustainable living is what was practiced for so many millennia. 
it is the rapid speed of industrialization that has you know in our um, effort to become very successful materially very successful we have managed to extend our lives because of a lot of innovations but simultaneously there has been an over exploitation of nature and resources earth is like any other part of the universe is self sustaining provided you give it a fighting chance otherwise it will react in a way that will be very heavy for not only humanity but so many other animals and plant life that actually is dependent because everything is interconnected you cannot take more than what you give back so this awareness has come fortunately there has been a great uh, uh, progress i will say universally but when you go to a poor person and you say no i you know you cannot use this just because it is cheap uh, the question is who allows it to be produced in the first place there are, there are governments there are regulators and then we as consumers we have a right if we will refuse to use it and we use our knowledge and wisdom and educate our people who may not have the same awareness i think we can reverse the cycle difficult very difficult in the stage we have reached but it is possible collectively so i think uh, it boils down to our being far sighted or uh, moving towards instant gratification or uh, instant satisfaction and not paying attention to how it is going to have a long term impact looking at uh, long term impact and uh, as a writer what do you think is there anything in your mind that you want to make certain um, i wouldn't say statements or how you want your writings to create an impact on your readers and in this context what is the next project uh, as an author rishi kant singh i have written a couple of articles on environmental consciousness i have written a paper and submitted to the parliamentary committee on environment uh, i really don't follow up uh, because i am not in the political system per se but as a citizen i believe that my representative will do it and do it well uh, what i feel is that uh, we individually also should make an effort you know don't have to go far look in your office look in your house see what you can reduce which causes waste which which uh, unfortunately causes landfills so, so think, that we can do absolutely so when that happens then there is more light and there is more space and uh, so on this um, note of spreading the joy uh, spreading the light uh, by being aware of our role in this uh, <laughs> cosmic uh, system and a responsible role uh, definitely uh, leads to a better world and through your writing uh, i would say you are making your own uh, contribution to make people aware so thank you very much for um, successfully completing and reaching out to your readers with the last nest rishi ji namaste dhanyawad thanking uh, rishi ji and thanking all of you for being a part of this conversation this is ashok vyas namaste